welcome back. Today I'm gonna talk uh, about a process that I use to merge um, big parts, in particular here uh, a base for a model that I'm working on. So as you can see I printed that in four parts and they are huge, they barely fit in my paint booth but um, we'll try to get rid of all these joints. So the first thing you need to do is of course to check if everything is okay. This part in particular had some issues here in the top but we're gonna get rid of everything in the process that I'm gonna be looking at. I really like to use this Gorilla Glue. I'm gonna leave the link in the description below if you're interested. It is a very uh, strong glue. It foams a little bit and takes a lot, long time to settle but once it's dry we'll hold everything in a single part. So the next steps is quite obvious. You just need to apply the glue in the mating surfaces of your um, parts. Uh, you don't need a lot and again this glue it's a PU based polyurethane based glue it does foam a little bit I'll show you that in a second uh, later on the video so don't apply that too much otherwise it can expand and create a gap uh, between the, the two parts you're joining so as you can see you don't even need to spread that very well just make sure you cover most of it and this print is very good because there is no way you can put two parts uh, wrongly because of the keys, the ways the keys were cut. And what I like to do in this stage is to use rubber bands to hold the parts in place. So make sure you, you have a, a band that is thick enough and can stretch enough to uh, go across your part like this. And of course make sure it is making applying some force in the direction of the joint that you're trying to make. Uh, whilst it's drying it takes probably like 30 minutes to dry you can always uh, force the part in place if there's any misalignment so make sure every surface that you will be displaying is aligned then repeat the same process in the, the other surfaces so I'm, I'm doing two halves here um, you can see also that the glue is quite uh, thick almost like uh, a honey type of texture so it takes sometimes a bit of a effort to take it out of the, um, the bottle but once again just apply that carefully in the, the surface that you want to, to join hold that firmly and use rubber bands so once you've joined a couple of parts together you need to do the same thing now to join the two halves uh, in the same using the same process uh, you might need a very big and strong rubber band, make sure everything aligns uh, well as you would expect uh, But the process is exactly the same, apply the glue and the rubber bands to hold it in place until it cures Once you're done you should have something that looks like this uh, Be generous on your rubber bands, uh, you want to keep the pressure on for the time that the, the glue is drying because again it expands uh, and make sure you put that in a, in a surface that you don't care too much because you can get a bit of a runny glue and damage the, the furniture so just to show you what I'm talking about the foaming as you can see the glue expands a little bit and will try to get out from any available gap so make sure again you leave it drying uh, over a paper or a surface that you don't care too much you can scrape the foam out easily with a blade or a, a spatula so this is exactly what I'm doing here uh, on the top I shouldn't bother too much because it is as you can see a, a rough texture like a, a, a mud uh, but if you have a flat surface for example you might want to scrape that out um, I'll show you here in the bottom say just easily come with the blade, remove the excess and if you even need you can get a buffer and send it out. Now to the filling part, I'm using a wall, drywall filler. Um, I'm using this flexible one but you can use any, any common one. Again I'll, I'll leave the link in the description. Uh, I just use my, my fingers to apply that to the gaps that I want to, to hide. So, in this case here everything that is going across the base that we just joined 
just get a generous amount of the filler and apply that. You can use a, a spatula or anything else to help, especially in the, in the tight spaces. For me here, using the finger will create a, a little bit of the messy effect of the rod, so I'm not bothering too much with the finish. Just make sure you are feeling this straight line in between the joints that you just created. Again, a little bit of foaming here that I'm removing with the blade. Got the whole extension of that line. You can see my print is also a bit rough because I printed in a very high speed. I will use the very same filler to close some imperfections. Once again, in my base it doesn't matter too much, it's supposed to be like a rough terrain, uh, and these uh, fillers should give me enough texture to blend into the model itself. So once you're done you should have something like this. You can go through your model again trying to find any imperfections and here the, the side of the, the, the base is very important for me. I'd like to make this a bit smoother to remove the, that line so it's uh, I'm applying that horizontally to make sure I always go for the vertical line that you see on the screen. Leave it drying for like a day uh, and then you can get some sandpaper and remove the excess and start blending stuff in. Again, my model doesn't require a lot of sanding because of the texture itself, but here in, in the side, for example, you can always try blending that a little bit better. This next step is uh, optional, but it will really help you highlight the areas that you need addressing more. So, grab a can of primer or, or some paint in a, in a unique color. Uh, lighter ones seems to work a little bit better. So, just very gently cover the whole thing with a um, very light coat of uh, primer. This will help you to highlight every single bit that you might require filling or better sanding and will preparate the surface for the next step. So as you can see here for example, there's some big gaps, some print folds, layer lines, another few folds, so sides as well. It helps you highlighting the, the, the issues. So I've repeated these uh, two steps two times. So once again, filling, sanding, and trying to address all the major blemishes. Now I'm gonna use some printing resin. This is leftovers from all of my uh, prints. I just dropped them all in a single bottle, so it is a bit dark in color, but doesn't really matter what resin do you use. Just pour that in a in a smaller container to make things a little bit easier. Grab a brush and start brushing and filling it with the resin. You will see that the resin will start pulling in some lower areas, but it will also help you kind of uh, cover all the imperfections and make it uh, a lot more smoother in terms of uh, layer lines and not and, and also the, the the gaps that we were feeling before. In my case, once again, the, the there was a lot of problems on the top surface here, and I'm using the resin to cover all of these. Uh, and it will give me the, the appearance of a, a rock or a mud uh, in the base. So yeah, just cover all the areas that you think it's necessary. And of course, because it's UV resin, you need to get a UV light. Make sure you get the correct lay wavelength of your resin that you're using. Normally it's around 405 nanometers, but there are some other different resins around the market. So just normal curing procedure, uh, a UV torch should do the work. I do have a more powerful um, UV light that I use for my UV curing chamber. Check on the link here if you, if you missed the video. So I use the very same light uh, in this case here, rotating the, the, the whole piece inside my booth. And as you can see, it starts curing and it will feel all the gaps and imperfections. This is just a high level view. I'm gonna be doing this twice and hopefully that will cover all the imperfections and uh, issues that I have 
and most importantly, the gaps that uh, were created by um, breaking the, the base in four parts. Of course, if you have a sunny day, you can also leave that uh, keyring in the sun until it doesn't get tacky anymore. This is definitely the best uh, curing solution. The final step as any uh, painting preparation, just a final coat of priming. Uh, now you can be a little bit more generous. This is going to be your, your final preparation layer before you can get that uh, painting finish that you would like in your, your figure. So, yeah, pretty much done. As you can see, you can barely spot the, the joints uh, and it's rock solid. It's essentially one single piece now. And this is a side to side comparison of before and after in several angles. You can see the top of the base itself. I managed to fix most of the fails that I had before. And because I want to paint it with a rocky effect, so I'm gonna just base coat this with a uh, satin black uh, to prepare for a dry brush and that should be good enough for what I'm, the results I'm looking for. And this is the final result. Once again a solid base, you can barely see those straight lines in the top of the, the base. You should be seeing four uh, seams here or joints, you can barely spot that of course credits to the artist as well due to the, the sculpt here on the side depending on the, the angle of the light you see a little bit but it is pretty good I think that's good enough for a base I will going to use a bit of a dry brush now so just quick forward and I'll show you the final results just applying some silver dry brush on top of it and as you can see it gives you a very nice effect almost like a, a rocky effect in any type of base and after some time doing dry brush this is pretty much the final result I'm probably gonna pop a, a little bit of color maybe painting these bricks maybe some different shades in, in, in the rocks but as you can see it looks already very good for a base so depending on the results you want this is a simple and easy uh, method thanks again for watching I'll see you next time